Okay, hello. Uh, we're going to start this video by uh, starting a, a VNC server so that we can communicate with our Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, so what I have done is to start um, an SSH connection, as I will show you. So we'll go here, and I'm going to type the IP, the IP address of my Raspberry Pi 3. And it's going to ask us for, for a login, which is P, and the password, which is always Raspberry, unless you change it, of course. So um, the next thing that we, we're going to do is that we're, we're running sudo, and uh, then we need to run the, the VNC server. So VNC server point one and the ge geometry of, of the screen. Uh, I'm going to set it a uh, VIC because um, I want to show you the console so that we can install KV and then we're going to use a depth of 24 all right so that's going to be starting all right it says that it is already running on one and then we're going to go to Thai VNC server so uh, we just go to the same IP and we use uh, the port number one to connect to our Raspberry so it's going to ask us for for um, for a password I have set the password as root and uh, you can do that by following the, um, the instructions that you can see here in, in this link that I'm putting um, at, the, at the description of the video. So we're inside the Raspberry Pi 3. And now what we're going to do is to open a console. We're going to make this bigger. And we're going to run sudo, but that's already run. All right. So um, we're going to go to documents. And as you can see here, uh, we have a folder named Kiwi. So uh, before you you have this this Kiwi folder, uh, you're going to be, go to documents or any location that you want. And then what you need to do is um, let's go here. Uh, you need to install all these libraries that you can see here and you can find here in this in this link. Uh, after you do that, there are two ways in which you can uh, install KV. The first one is using the pip installer, and the other is just cloning the repository into, into the folder that you want. Uh, I highly recommend using this one because you have um, a better understanding and a better handling of, of the of the KV libraries. Um, so that's what I have done here. I have uh, downloaded the repository, which comes, as you can see, in these files. And the next thing that you need to do is to run make inside the Kiwi folder. So um, that's going to take a while. Uh, it's going to take at least 20 to 30 minutes. And after that, uh, after that, when you're done, uh, you're just going to run these two commands, which will set a uh, Kiwi as an environmental variable, environment variable, so that you can uh, import Kiwi from from any location. Because um, I'm going to show you that. All right. So, uh, for example, we're inside the Kiwi folder. So, if I just do import Kiwi, it's going to recognize Kiwi. But uh, let's pretend I just leave this folder and I set uh, Python. Then I, I import Kiwi, and as you can see, it says new module named Kiwi. Um, so, another proof. Uh, let's go to to these folders in which I'm developing something. And let's use import Kiwi. So we're unable to, to use Kiwi. So in order to fix that, uh, we just go to the Kiwi to the Kiwi folder, to the other Kiwi folder, and then we run the commands that I have showed you before. Uh, and they are right here because I have used them a while ago. Okay, so here you are. Here is one of the of the commands that you can that you have to run as you can see right here, and the other, and the other one is used uh, which is uh, not so long to to copy. Okay, and now we should have a key in all the folders that we want. So let's just go here and say Python and then import key and so it imports key now. Uh, then we go to the microscope CV. Um, then we go to the folder that we were before, we go into Python and then we do import Kiwi. All right, and now you have Kiwi as an environment, as an environment variable. Okay, 
um, uh, just make sure this is, yeah, this is recording. Um, all right, so you now have Kiwi, you're happy, you, you can go with, uh, you can develop some Kiwi apps. But um, the next thing that I wanted to show you here in this, in this video is that um, whenever you are using a touch screen, uh, pretend that you're using those 5 inch uh, resistive touch screens or using the official Raspberry Pi uh, touch screen or even using an Arduino uh, touch screen as the one that I am working with right now. Um, that I don't know if I can show you. It's this one over here, which is, as you can see, kind of big and very, very, very comfortable to develop. But um, there are a few things that you need to to do before running uh, this screen. So that's what, what I'm going to show you here. And I think it's it's important to show because I may forget in the future as well. So I prefer to have it documented. And um, to do that, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to the to this to this um, to this folder where uh, the config that any file is located. So we're going to run nano uh, the home kv and the config any. So uh, that takes you to this file that you can see over here. And it has a lot of uh, variables that are going to show you are going to help you when whenever you are developing with Kiwi, especially in these touch in these uh, touch screens. So the first thing that you want to do is uh, to activate uh, the keyboard mode. So as you can see here, I have used the, the doc um, configuration uh, variable because uh, doc means that uh, we're able to use the the, the screen of, of uh, we're able to use the keyboard the virtual keyboard on the screen. So that's very useful because you are going to write perhaps in your applications. And um, the next thing to do, the next thing to do is um, consider using this full screen uh, variable. If you set zero, then um, then it's not going to to fill the whole screen but if you use one it is going to fill the whole screen um but that's not annoying at all but let's see now this is important and this, ha this has taken me a while to to implement um you're going to find this this um, subtitle name input and uh, you're going to find a for a, in defect of for default i mean for default you're going to find um, these two uh, lines uncommented and the ones that are commented like uh, this 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 and this um, they are not going to be there so you're just going to have mouse equals mouse and hit uh, under under bar um, percentage and that whole thing uh, uncommented and you will know that your touch screen will not work so um, there are different configurations for different touch screens. So if you're using those uh, 3.5, 5, and 7 inch uh, resistive touch screens, but remember the resistive touch screens, then uh, it's okay if you just use the files over here, except this. But you use these four over here, these four that are uncommented. So uh, you just uh, uncomment those, then go back. And then your your touch screen should be able to work. But as we're not using that uh, screen, we're not going to use that. And so we're going to comment these these lines over here. All right. And uh, what worked for me and works using these Arduino touch screens, capacitive touch screens, which have multi touch as well, uh, is using these two lines of code. Uh, but before um, applying the changes, there is another thing that you need to do and that is installing you need to install mtdb uh, which is uh, this library that you can see here so uh, to do that um, i have over here uh, here's the link where it tells you how to install that uh, of course in a linux distribution so the only thing that you need to do is that uh, first update your your software and then uh, run apt get installed mtdb tools uh, which i'm going to show you um, apt that's that's very annoying when whenever using these these servers they are very very annoying 
it's better if you just connect a keyboard and a mouse but alright uh, so we're going to type applicant install and I don't remember mtd uh, tools all right? and so that's going to read um, the library and as you will see uh, it's already it's going no I'm sorry it's going to install in my in my distribution So let's wait, let's wait a while while it is installing and uh, remember I'm also putting these two lines of code in the description of the video so just add them to your uh, to your um, root config.ini file and then you should be good to go with your application.